So open your Bibles and go to Daniel chapter 6. Now, I'm not saying, because this will sound very familiar to you, because what the present day news, and not just the present day news for the last year and a half, has been like. There's a lot of similarities between what our present, present president, President Trump, is going through compared to what Daniel went through. Now, I'm not comparing Daniel and Donald Trump, so don't get, write me silly emails or get super spiritual about it. I'm not comparing the two. I'm just looking at the sim similarities of both men when they're put in positions of authority. And I've said this many times before, what comes around goes around. History has a tendency of repeating itself. That's why in prophetic areas of God's book, you'll see multiple fulfillments of a same prophecy. Verse 1, chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be all over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Now, Daniel was put in, in a high position of authority in Darius's government. Verse 3, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princesses. So, of all those High fluting authority figures, Daniel rose to the top of all of them. Why? Because of his excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Kind of like Joseph in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, which rose to be second only to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh gave him rule over the whole kingdom of Egypt. Well, Daniel's put in the same position. Darius set him and the, to set him over the whole realm. And the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Now, obviously you could find fault in our president, president Donald Trump. You could find fault in any man. And you might not even like our present president's policies. But you can't fault them for not trying. Something that's new, something that's different, something that cuts the cord from the old way of doing things in Washington, someone that goes against the deep state, which we read further here, it reads, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. What do you think Mueller's investigation is all about? There's, yes, there's going to be casualties along the way, because other men will be exposed, or possibly even women, that have faults and have made errors in their life. Some deliberately and intentionally, and some haphazardly. And they're going to do everything they can to prove that and discredit these people because somehow it associates back to the present president, Donald Trump. 
if they can't get to him for Russian collusion crimes, let's try to destroy his credibility by bringing other people down in the process. Because obviously, at some point in their lives, they had some association with Donald Trump. And by that association, it makes them guilty of anything they want to come up with and pin on them, whether it's true or not. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together. Another translation came to Moses lead together to the king. They got an audience with the king. Said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Here goes the plot. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish the royal statute. In other words, the deep state, which cons considered, consisted of, in Daniel's day, of those presidents, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statue. They came up with a big old scheme, a plan, to somehow trap Daniel and cause the king to come against Daniel to eventually eliminate his life. And they asked the king to establish a royal statue and to make firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall he cast into them the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign in writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altered not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, you just got to love this Daniel. What did he do? He knew this is a plot against him. I'm sure of it. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. See, the petition that the deep state of Daniel's day was to pass a decree that who shall ever ask a petition of any god or man for a 30-day period, save the king, should be cast in a den of lions. And as soon as Daniel heard that, he said, up yours in Daniel's way. And he did just the opposite. Open up his window, which was facing towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He was not going to change just because the climate around him changed and a new decree by some evil doers that pull a, a fast one on the king never telling the king what their true intentions were and that was to trap Daniel it was not going to influence Daniel one bit in how he served his God and how he prayed to his God and he went on doing what he did three times a day. And then these men assembled and found Daniel praying. Here comes the spies. Here's the spy gate. Kind of reminds you of the FISA court document. The spy on Donald Trump. Whether he was colluding with the Russians or not.
using foreign angels, not even part of this country, to develop a plot to convince a judge why they further had to investigate in the matter so they can trap Donald Trump. Nothing is new under the sun, my friends. I've been saying that for years now. Everything that you see and played out right now has been, in one way or another, been played out many times over. We just have a familiar story here with Daniel compared to what's happening today towards our president. I don't care if you're a President Trump fan or not. Quite frankly, no matter who he puts in office, I mean God allows me to be placed in office, is still under his control. I have said that over and over and over again. What I'm trying to point out, don't be shocked what's happening right now when you think the evidence of what the deep state is trying to do is so overwhelming that how come most people cannot see this? Because most people have been blinded for most of their lifetime concerning the truth about anything, not just this matter. The blind mean the blind, and they're all falling in the ditch together. Then these spires, these, the Spygate team, assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. The king's decree, Hast thou not signed a decree that every man shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of Medes and Persians, which alter not. Yep, that's exactly what I said. Then answered then answer they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, or king, nor, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make his petition three times a day. He's going against you, king. What is Trump doing? He's going against the establishment. Which, when you analyze it, they think they're the king. And the presidents, and the governors, and the captains. They're all in one. And those are just the people on the front lines. The politicians. We're not even talking about non-politicians. The Bilderbergs. The Rothschilds. All the secret societies and the money people that run most of the top ten financial institutions in the world. The stack is, uh, the deck is stacked against Donald Trump just like it was with Daniel. The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, alter not. Verse 13, Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is the children of the captivity, Oh, that, that guy, who is not really one of us to start with. He is part of the children of the captivity of Judah, meaning he was a Jew, more than likely. Regard not thee, O king, nor to decree that thou hast signed, but make his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. The king was disappointed in the decree he made. He didn't want to see Daniel suffer for it. And he tried to figure out how to deliver Daniel from the enthroned in the den of lions. And he labored till the going down the sun to deliver him. It bothered him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. In other words, we got you. 
We got you, King. And we got you, Daniel. Then the king commanded, they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. You can read right over that and not realize this king was, even though he was doing a dastardly thing, was having faith at the same time. Now go figure that one out. He's proclaiming to Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. This is a person that agonized, a king that agonized over this, this decision that he had to make because he was trapped in signing a petition and he couldn't go back on it. Well, he could have, but he probably wouldn't reign king very long. Somehow, through that agonizing decision, he developed enough faith in Daniel's God to believe that he would be delivered from the lion's den. Go figure that. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. He couldn't sleep all night long. He didn't want to be entertained. He spent the night not eating. And he couldn't sleep. And the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel to the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel, and has shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me, for, must, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. No hurt. Then, was, then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up at, out of the den, so Daniel was taken out of the den, and no matter, manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, the deep state people. They cast them into the den of lions, their children, and their wives. Well, that was a harsh penalty to pay. You talk about something backfiring on you with horrible consequences. And the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto the people, nations and languages that dwell on the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men Tremble in fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivered and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prosper, not only in the reign of Darius, but also in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. <coughs> So what's the takeaway of this story that we just read in Daniel chapter 6 and what's happening today in our current events in this country, the country, the United States of America? You go to Daniel chapter 2. Starting with verse 20, it reads, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Verse 21, And he changed the times and the seasons. 
He removed kings. He removed kings and set it up kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. So bottom line, God's put put presidents in office and he takes them out. He puts kings in places of position and he takes them out. That's what Daniel twenty I mean Daniel two verse twenty one is saying here. So what am I saying? There's a deep state that want to throw our present president, whether you like him or not, into a den of lions. But God's word says something different. Haters will always be there. The deep state people will always be there. But if he wants to protect our president, Donald Trump, he'll shut up the mouth of lions also. As long as he wants this president to be in office to accomplish whatever he's going to accomplish that God wants him to accomplish. Or what God allows to happen to move along the calendar, especially in these last day events. And if you don't think you are so far under the sand with your head and so deep that you don't think God allowed this president to be placed in office to achieve a purpose. There's probably more than one purpose he has to accomplish. But recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is a major one. I didn't have time, and I probably will never have time, you have to look for it yourself, to read how the deep state so, well, how angry they were when Donald Trump actually made the move, moving the offices we had in Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Talking about making at least the players in this country fuming mad. They're looking for anything and everything and they'll leave no stone uncovered until they can find something to impeach. And I wouldn't be surprised to eliminate this president with an assassination attempt. That sounds gloom and doom. But everything that I read and everything that I've discovered, and I'm just probably touching the, the tip of an iceberg, points in that direction. But as long as God wants him in the office of the President of the United States, he will shut the mouth of lions. He achieved the President office of these United States. If you really think about it against all human odds, no one thought he would be there. No one. But he's there. And it's just not a deep state against Donald Trump. And when I say deep state, I'm not just talking about players in this country alone. I'm talking about worldwide. I'm not just talking about the human element of the deep state. I'm also talking about the unseen 
spiritual wickedness and evil spirits and angels and demons. Deep state. Playing out in front of our eyes. If you think about it in real time. We're looking upon a cosmic battle taking place. What you see is just what you could perceive here in these three dimensions that we can perceive things in and how people interact with each other in those dimensions. I'm talking about something beyond that that's being played out in a cosmic war, in a cosmic battle because Satan knows in his minions the significance of what happened was it last April or May when Trump moved that embassy to the capital and declared Jerusalem being the capital of Israel that we recognize that now all previous presidents proclaimed they would do it none of them had the guts to do it I think they just said it just to get in office because they thought that's what people wanted to hear. The deep State is trying to get rid of this president and they'll go to great lengths to try to accomplish that. His path to that presidential office was unconventional. Whether you like him or not, it was allowed by God to take place and will remain president of these United States of America as long as God wants him to be there. The attacks won't let up. They're unprecedented. And they'll keep coming. Probably more and more of them. The deep state has an evil intent. They're full of corruption. But God will fulfill his sovereign purposes using anyone he allows to be in that office for his purposes. And all the enemy attacks will be with no avail. And why? And I repeat, because I've been saying this Time and time again, God is in control. This story has been played out many different times throughout history. You're just seeing it for yourselves. If you're living in this time period, which you are, if you're watching me. But we have a perfect example of someone that didn't deserve any of the things. Maybe Donald Trump deserves some of the things that he is facing now. But Daniel, as far as we know, didn't deserve any of it. And they still came after him. The deep state don't want their apple cart turned over. Republicans, Democrats, Independents, all politicians and people behind the scenes in the here and now world of the seen and the unseen is in a battle of a lifetime with a cosmic battle being played out. But we know, thank God, Who's in control? And nothing happens without him allowing it to happen. Period. Period. I think that's what I'm going to say about that for now. But 
I've been getting some questions what I think what's happening. Well, the short answer, there's a cosmic battle going on. They're using human players because Satan knows. And don't you think that Satan is not furious? Because he, if he didn't know it, it was a real huge black eye. And I don't really think most people know the significance of how important Ephraim was finally to take the lead and say, nope, this is the capital of Jerusalem, we recognize it, and that's where we're going to be. More on that in the future, but for now, that's all I'm going to say on this subject. Now it's your turn to talk to me for a few moments. Play the song. <laughs>